Oh, here it comes, and that's right, it's the Cobra Fang with the Cobra Gyro Pilot. There's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe. It's Major Blood in the Cobra Copter. They're after Gung Ho. Get the G.I. Joe Dragonfly Copter. Wild Bill to the rescue. Major Blood, look. Let's get out of here. Oh, hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another review. And this time around, I know what you guys are thinking. You're probably thinking we're waiting for, that's right, we're waiting for that third party, Kalavinka. Kalavinka from Big Firebird Toys, which is kind of a rendition for Transformers, Macross, whatever, but that's not what we're doing. Obviously, we're gonna be doing the Cobra Fang, guys, so here we go, let's do it. All right, and here we are introducing the Cobra Fang. That's right, one of the basic helicopters, you could say, that Cobra used. I always kind of wondered why they didn't have an enclosure for the cockpit, but I'm thinking it's because maybe they wanted to cut down on costs and just want to mass produce this guy so they can just, you could say, send over a whole army in numbers, even though they're just going to get blasted anyways. However, this right here is the retro rendition, pretty much, of the original Fang, and the original Fang, as I recall, didn't come with a pilot, it didn't actually have this artwork, everything's changed, and there's a probably going to be a bunch of other changes as well. Unfortunately, I don't have my old Fang with me, it's still back in the States, and I'm not going to run back and get COVID just to go grab it. So in any case, we're going to make do. I do have some side uh, photo comparisons, which I can put up real quick uh, later down the line, but for now, I think we're just going to go ahead and stick with how this looks and whether or not the Cobra Fang is the right choice for you. So let's go ahead and go straight to it. Uh, as you can see from the box art, it does come with a pilot. The original, of course, did not come with a pilot. Here it says the role is the gyrocopter pilot. Nice. Primary specialty, aerial combat. Secondary specialty, hand-to-hand. -hand. First place, various countries. Okay, so it's universal. They hire anyone from anywhere around the world. Fantastic. You got this also written in different languages as well, so that's nice. Um, there you go. You got the Hong Kong distribution label, which doesn't really make a difference. Uh, only if you guys are buying this later at Walmart or Target, it's not going to come from Hong Kong. And you can see it shows them some pictures of different details. Uh, the back uh, tail tail rotator blade, I guess, is the engine. You got its uh, rotating blaster in the front. All right, and uh, yeah, pretty much that's how the box looks. Now, for myself, I'm not I'm not like crazy about the retro line. I mean, it's nice because you you can pretty much uh, collect the figures that you probably never did as you grew up. But it's definitely not something like the six inch line classified series where it's all brand new, totally different. This is something that we've seen before, or you could say has like very similarities with stuff that we grew up with. However, it's not got it doesn't appeal to me for that big wowness where it's like, well, we got classified six inch figure, right? These are all that three and seventy three point seven five inch. Let's go ahead and just I'm gonna slowly, okay, slowly bend back the tape, and we're gonna pull this guy out. All right, there we are. And let's go ahead and slide this out and see what the box components are. I can I can imagine people having like just a whole army of these just set around your terror dome, right? All right, there we go. Let's go ahead. Okay, there we go. Backside, and there it is, right there. And actually, where's the figurine? Okay. Oh, okay. I can see it's double double box. So the figurine is actually here. There's a the pilot. Okay. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> very, very, very basic. You got the rotator blade. I'm assuming you get the additional weapons here, missiles here, uh, giant bomb right there. Okay. Decals right here. Okay. Instructions right. Let's see. Instructions right here, folks. That's it. Uh, it's a no brainer, I think, for most people. You're probably only going to use this if you don't want to apply the sticker application. But as far as putting it together, you're not going to need much. You're not gonna need much assistance with it uh, whatsoever, I'm pretty sure, okay? Let's go ahead and set this guy up. All right, guys, now, before we go ahead and look directly at the Cobra Fang, we're gonna go ahead and look at the Gyro Pilot first. And I gotta say, first off, my I don't know if it's just exactly my bad luck with having this particular uh, pilot, but I found that the quality control, at least on this box, was pretty bad. The reason being is, I'll tell you, here on the arms, as you know, okay, the joints are supposed to actually, he's actually supposed to be able to bend his arm. However, here, if you take a look, it's so tight, or I'm not sure if it maybe was never unsoldered, or I don't know how they fused it, but here, you can't actually, it will not bend his arm. I've been actually trying so hard to try to get it to, like, just turn, but it cannot. 
And if I do, I've noticed in the joint part here, it's actually beginning to whiten. So if I pull any more, you know, it's really likely that it's going to snap off. And that's just really bad. And it's not just one arm, both arms are the same. Both of them cannot bend at the elbow joint. And so that basically means he can only raise his arm pretty much this way around and that's it. He won't be able to basically make a 90 degree angle like the other um, like the other pilot from the his tank. So we'll see that. I'll show you that in a moment. However, okay, let's go ahead and uh, aside from that issue, look at him in detail. There you have his basically wearing his uh, his basically his pilot's mask goggles. Very interesting. It comes with a helmet that's removable. And yes, that's right. He's got brown hair, everyone. He's got brown hair. So there's the paint application giving him some brown hair. Uh, the basic, let's see, flak jacket, flight jacket is sort of removable as you can see. Um, I'm not sure how you would remove the whole thing. I do know that from the waist, it looks like it's pegged in. The belt is also probably going to be removable. So if you do want to take off the flak jacket and the belt, then that's good. He does have a side arm right here, which is also removable as well. And it already came with him. It wasn't separated. So you can actually pull this out when you get your, when you get your gyro pilot. When you do, you can go ahead and just arm him if you like. However, I'm not sure what a side arm like that is going to do against a Joe. But hey, you know, he's better than nothing, right? So <laughs> any case, let's go ahead and take a look at other parts. There's a hole in the pin in the back. I'm assuming in the later down the line when they start making more figures like this, you can mix and match parts, probably backpacks, whatnot, accessories. You got his boots. Unfortunately, okay, at least the legs do bend. That's right, the legs do bend at the joints with the double joint pegs right here. And you can see already he can, you know, he can pretty much kneel down. Kneel down probably ready to be executed. <laughs> no, I shouldn't say that. Any guess. And uh, yeah, that's how it is pretty much. It's very standard. Helmet right there. I, I would have thought, actually, to be honest, it wouldn't really make much sense for a pilot to have just like a top hard hat helmet. I would have thought they would have just come with one solid mask, similar to the Vipers or similar to to whatnot. But okay, all right. I guess this is their design that they want for their gyro pilot. Uh, obviously, again, as I mentioned, this doesn't actually the original. The original Cobra Fang did, never came with a pilot whatsoever. Actually, when we saw them being piloted, they just looked like normal Cobra troopers. Uh, and that was pretty much it. Now, let's do a comparison real quick. This right here is the His Tank driver. As you can see, this is the retro His Tank. And um, you can take a look right there. Uh, the design of it is completely different from the body of the gyro pilot. Meaning that if you look here with the pilot, he can actually swivel right here around the boot area. And here on the top, this also swivels. Unfortunately, again, as I said, my copy of this pilot right here cannot bend his elbow. Can't bend his arm to his elbow. But if you compare it to the hiss right here, he's fine. Yeah, this guy's fine. This guy's absolutely fine. He doesn't have that swivel on the foot, on the boot area. He does have this on the foot, but he doesn't actually have the cap. So his swivel's on the lower end of his boot right here, not on the cap area. And um, yeah, same thing, double joint right there on the side. Of course, with the his tank driver, he can also remove this part if you wanted to. I'm not sure how, but if you, I'm sure because it's loose, it's actually removable in some way, shape, or form. I just wouldn't want to do it because I don't want to damage the figure. And if you're looking at size comparison, they're roughly about the same height. So you're not going to get much difference between these two. Now let's do another comparison. And this time I'm going to bring out one of the guys from that box right there. And that's right, Crimson Team Viper. This is uh, 2004, I believe, so it's not back in the 80s figure yet because I don't actually have my old Joe collection because it's, again, back in the States. And so right here, you can take a look at the size comparison between a Retro Joe, or you could say a Viper. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's a big difference, folks. Look at the height comparison between these two. It's almost like this is a munchkin right now. You can say the original Joes are a bit more of a munchkin size compared to the new Retro Edition. And uh, as far as, of course, details, I mean, this you know, this particular one was quite detailed. I guess because it was a uh, Joe Con exclusive, right? The um, Crimson Strike team with Baroness and the, the brothers. But um, as far as the engineering goes, it, of course, has come a long way where basically you're not going to have... Here you can see there's screws inside his legs and there's a screw in the back to fuse. And, of course, when you feel this, this is, of course, that hard type of plastic. And um, here, right here, basically you can see, okay, uh, this is more of a soft type of plastic. 
so you, I mean, obviously you're gonna have more flexibility with this guy a bit. And don't forget in the past, uh, these have those, these are between the waist area, have those bands in between that kind of like, instead of having one solid peg swivel that they have here, you've got a band that you don't wanna twist it too much because obviously it will break. But, so it's, you know, the engineering part, in my opinion, has come a long way with how they made the new retro edition of the Joes, which is good. Um, good parts and bad parts. Again, obviously, it's very unfortunate that my particular figure, and I hope if you purchase this, your figure doesn't come with it. I'm hoping it, it is only mine, and it's not actually every single one. I don't have another box to confirm, but just be very wary when you get yours to try out this joint and don't force it. I'm not going to force mine, so for now, he's just going to be stiff-armed, pretty much. And now we're going to go ahead and jump directly into the main attraction, which is the actual Fang itself. And as you can see, pretty much there it is right there. I didn't actually apply any of the uh, sticker applications, which are right here, because I do figure, I think later down the line, I might actually repaint this job and to make it similar to maybe the Crimson Fang. <laughs> as you can see, I've got the Crimson Strike Team, so why not have a Crimson Fang? And later down the line, maybe I'll have a Crimson Hiss. However, there it is. I would say from here, this pretty much is not the exact same as the original because of the fact that in the back, and I'll show you a picture description in a moment. In the back right over here, these bars on the side were actually just red roll bars. Instead here, it's a solid black piece. Uh, the missiles, okay, and the turret are very similar to the original. However, I also found the original also wasn't as detailed with the cockpit control. So the cockpit control in the original was just a solid, it was, you could say, it's like a solid gray toothpick in my opinion. Um, and so they did, of course, you know, make a little bit of changes, not a huge amount, just some, but a pretty much noticeable, noticeable difference, I think, mostly, could have been with the shape, and I do believe, I mean, again, I don't have... I don't have the original to show in comparison as this is not a comparison video. Uh, just basically letting you guys see a first hand of what the actual Cobra fan looks like. But as I can tell, I do believe the original was maybe just a little bit longer. And this one seems to be a bit bulkier in my opinion. I, I can't confirm it. So later down the line, I'm sure when these hit the States, pretty much somebody who is going to pick this up and, you know, have the original and compare it. You guys will be able to see later on down the line. Again, there are two missiles on each side. And then, of course, the original, um, you could say it's Hydrogen Cobra Bomb. Would it be? Yeah. Giant bomb right there. And we're going to go ahead and fit the pilot inside. So let's go ahead and put this guy inside. And let's take a look. It's not a very wonderful fit, if you ask me. If you're putting this guy inside. Whoop, there goes the sidearm. Let me go ahead and holster that. Putting the pilot does take a little bit of trickiness to maneuver. Because, look, the holes for his legs to go inside just right here if you take a look they're not that wide and so i actually i don't know why they would actually do that because in reality this is not tactical i mean you, you're like it's almost like this is like the wright brothers first takeoff or something where they got to pretty much use their pedals to the metal windmill on wheels called the helicopter this french model flew for only a few precarious moments and never got as high as an elephant's eye to try to get to the gyro and oh as you can see I've already got his, uh, you know, his helmet off, and there it is. All right, let's go ahead and put that on. Go back to the helmet for safety purposes. There we are. All right, safety purposes. And then let's see if he's going to hold, because again, I can't... Okay, look at that. It looks like he's uh, sort of holding on to it, I, I would say. I mean, I can't really bend his arms, which is unfortunate. But okay, fine. There you go. There he is sitting inside. Now, um, the rotation of the actual main rotor is not a very loose rotor it's very it's it's very tight so i think if you wanted to you could probably loosen it up later um just be careful because as you know this is one piece that actually pops in so when you put it in okay you got that little joint right here put it inside and when you try to spin it you're not going to get that nice you know it's definitely not going to be like the tomahawk or whatnot or the mamba where it has that little control this is definitely yeah, I mean, it can spin, but you're going to use some force. If you wanted to go really nice, get that nice rotation, which I would like to have, you're probably going to use some, you're probably going to have to like sand it a little bit and use some w, WD-40. That would be my best bet. Um, don't quote me on that. I'm sure everyone else has a better fix. Please leave a comment below what you would like to do, but that's just what comes off the top of my mind. Let's see. Does this rotor in the back rotate? And actually, I can't even get my finger inside. Let me see if I got a Let's see. Okay, I got Cobra Commander's pistol. Does it turn? Yeah, it does turn, but you're definitely not going to use your finger to turn it. So, unless you're a kid who's got really skinny fingers, and you're even then, you're not going to put it inside, you're not going to go ahead and turn it. 
And here is the front blaster, the ball rotation, very iconic for the original Fang. Okay, it's got paint applications on the side showing the engine part, engine part in the back as well. Um, you got a hole right here in the back, so if you wanted to place like an LED to give it some nice fiery effect, that would also also be kind of uh, you know that would that, that would that would look pretty cool in my opinion. And there it is, pretty much. That is the Cobra Fang, folks. Oh, one more detail that I noticed when I was looking at the photos of the original Fang, they don't have the uh, foot pegs. If you what I'm talking about is uh, standard pegs that the original Joes had on the feet, so they could actually stand on the vehicles. This does not have it. So if you were going to place a Joe or a Viper or a Soldier on here, he would not be able to stand um, properly because there's none of those little uh, pegs that go over here on the side. As I recall, and looking at the photo in detail, I saw that that the original had the peg so that they could actually have troopers hanging on the side but to be honest my goodness was this small type of aircraft you don't want to be i don't know it's just not tactical i mean it's not tactical cobra could have thought a better idea the fang is very iconic it's very interesting it was fun loving but as far as modern warfare goes eh, definitely not definitely this doesn't look like a good sign we got some skulls on the ground a skull we got an explosion marks we got a his tank that's all bashed uh probably because i'm kind of lazy right now to put it together and so far right now there's a pocket and he's got the his tank driver in his hands. Uh oh, it looks like it's gonna be the end of the line for the his tank driver. But wait, what's going on? Oh, here it comes, and that's right, it's the Cobra Fang with the Cobra Gyro Pilot. And there he is with his little stiff arms, probably not being able to bend because of the quality control again. And he's taking off, and what is he gonna do? It looks like he's gonna take off Apocalypse. And what's he gonna shoot out first? He's taking off with his missiles. There go the missiles. Boom! 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 <laughs> oh my goodness! It looks like there's no effect! Blasters, missiles, nothing! There's only one weapon left, and you know what that's gonna be! Here it goes! Time to launch a big one! Woohoo! Wait! Oh no! He looks like he caught it! But that's okay! Because it was a timer! Oh! <laughs> There you have it, folks. It looks like at the end, Dr. Mindbender's special contraption of some sort of weapon that he put on the fang proved to be useful after all, next to having made Serpentor. And these guys look like they're going to be ready to go home. What do you think, folks? Hey everyone, thanks for watching our review. I hope you all like it. In my opinion, overall, I think the Cobra Fang is an okay, okay rendition to your retro collection. Definitely only just pick up maybe one copy, not multiple of this, unless you're a Cobra Fang fan. Uh, for myself, okay, I found that it didn't really excite me as much, um, partially due to the fact that, again, I think it was a put off that the pilot itself had a quality control issue. When you guys saw the joint was, I was just trying to bend that. I was just, I was like, I was like, okay. Let's keep bending, let's keep bending, and there you go. It was about to whiten and snap off. So I'm assuming that's a one-off. I don't know because I didn't buy another one, and I'm hoping that it's just the case. If not, please, when you all get yours later down the line, let me down, let me know in the comments below just to let me know that I am the only one and not you guys, all right? Uh, otherwise, you know, I, I would say that Hasbro has to do a, like, a backtrack and recall all of these to fix that issue. It is just like too... It's too serious. It's definitely something you do not want. But the actual Fang itself, okay, nice, not bad. Detailing there, you got it with the uh, engines and the control panels. I do think it's not very good fit. It's not a very good fit between how the pilot fits inside. Um, I think the original probably fit a little bit better because here you've got those two holes for each leg to go inside and this figure doesn't seem to be scaled exactly well to fit inside the pilot's cockpit. I mean, uh, again, guys, just get one copy of this. That's just what I think. Again, if you're gonna army build, go for it, but you know, it's not really worth it. You guys can save your money for better figures down the line, right? Okay, so that is gonna wrap it up for this review, guys. Thanks again for watching, and you know, guys, what to do. If you wanna keep watching more of this stuff and you haven't subscribed, click that button. All right, I'm Mr. Stan, and I'll see you guys on the next video.